In this episode, I will explain the possible meaning of a screen positive or abnormal non-invasive prenatal test or NIPT result. I will discuss the limitations of this test, what to ask your healthcare provider, and the next steps to learn more about your baby's health. For those of you who are new here, I am Kendra, a board certified genetic counselor who specializes in prenatal care. I produce informational videos about prenatal genetic testing and how to navigate unexpected news in pregnancy. If you do not want to miss a video, press the subscribe button now. As you watch this video, you may be feeling panicked or anxious among many other emotions. These are common responses after receiving an abnormal test result. I promise you are not alone. Thousands of women receive abnormal NIPT results each year. Together, we will explore what this result may mean for your pregnancy and the support available to you. Look for a future video that will focus on strategies to manage the feelings that can arise from receiving unexpected news in pregnancy. So what prenatal genetic test am I talking about? The test we are talking about today goes by many different names, including NIPT, or non-invasive prenatal testing, cell-free fetal DNA screening, or CF DNA testing, and common brand names including Maternity 21, Panorama, or Prequel. This is not the same test as a maternal serum screening test. There are many different types of serum screening tests, which go by names like first trimester screening, integrated screening, quad screening, sequential screening, and AFP screening. If you received an abnormal serum screening result, I have created a separate video for you. So what do your tests come back positive or abnormal for? It is important to understand what condition your pregnancy is at an increased risk for. Most commonly, this may include Down syndrome, also known as trisomy 21, Edwards syndrome, also known as trisomy 18, Patau syndrome, also known as trisomy 13, or sex chromosome aneuploidy, such as Turner syndrome, monosomy X, Kleinfelter syndrome, also known as XXY syndrome, among other differences in the X and Y chromosomes. Your test result also could have come back abnormal for a microdeletion syndrome or a different chromosome abnormality. In rare cases, NIPT results may come back positive for multiple chromosome conditions. The meaning of this specific result should be discussed with a genetic counselor and or your healthcare provider. You may be wondering, is NIPT results always right? The answer is absolutely not. This is a screening test, which means that false positive results can occur and your pregnancy may be unaffected. The chance to have a pregnancy affected with some chromosome conditions, including Down syndrome, trisomy 18, and trisomy 13, increases with the age of the egg. For example, a person who conceived a pregnancy at age 35 or older, or who used a donor egg retrieved from a person at age 35 or older, has a higher chance that their NIPT result is a true positive compared to a younger person, for example, someone aged 25. So what is the chance for your pregnancy to be affected if you received an abnormal result? Understandably, this is a question that everyone wants to know immediately. In some cases, additional information can be obtained from a prenatal ultrasound to help estimate this chance. Some labs include a percentage on the NIPT test report called the PPV or positive predictive value. The PPV means the chance that a person who receives an abnormal test result actually has an effect in pregnancy. For example, a PPV of 50% means that there is a 50% chance that the pregnancy is truly affected, which means there is an equal 50% chance that the pregnancy is not affected. If abnormal ultrasound findings have been seen in a pregnancy with an abnormal NIPT result, the chance the pregnancy is affected is often, but not always, increased from the PPV listed on the test report. The PPV is different from other percentages that may appear on the test report. The PPV is not the same as the sensitivity or specificity of the test. Ask your healthcare provider about the PPV of your test result, or ask to speak to a genetic counselor to learn more about your results. You can find a genetic counselor near you in the United States and Canada at the following website.
So what additional tests can be performed to learn if a pregnancy is truly affected or if the result is a false positive? No decision should be made about a pregnancy based on a screen positive NIPT result. Additional testing should be offered and may include diagnostic testing and or prenatal ultrasound. You may be wondering, can prenatal ultrasound diagnose a chromosome condition in a baby? Prenatal ultrasound looks for differences in a baby's growth and development. Some changes in growth or development can be associated with genetic or chromosome conditions. For this reason, ultrasound may be able to provide additional information about the chance for a pregnancy to be affected. However, ultrasound cannot determine with 100% certainty whether a baby has a specific genetic condition. Speak to your healthcare provider about the benefits and limitations of ultrasound. You might be wondering, what is a diagnostic test? A diagnostic test goes by different names such as CVS or amniocentesis. Unlike ultrasound, diagnostic tests can be used to determine if a pregnancy is or is not affected with a specific genetic condition. This type of test is more accurate than a screening test like NIPT. The two common diagnostic tests, as I mentioned, are called CVS or chorionic villus sampling and amniocentesis. CVS and amniocentesis are performed at different times during pregnancy. CVS is commonly performed between 10 to 13 weeks, whereas amniocentesis is performed anytime after 16 weeks in pregnancy. Both tests require a needle to be inserted into the uterus. For CVS, a sample of tissue is taken from the placenta, and for amniocentesis, a sample of amniotic fluid is collected from around the baby. Both tests can examine all of a baby's chromosomes. CVS and amniocentesis are associated with some risks to the pregnancy. The risk for a pregnancy loss from either procedure is less than a 1 in 100 chance, which is the same as a less than 1% chance. These risks should be discussed more with your healthcare provider. You might be wondering, well, what are reasons for a false positive NIPT result? If a diagnostic test is performed and confirms that a pregnancy is not affected, with a chromosome condition, there are multiple explanations for why the NIPT result returned abnormal. These reasons include the following. One, the pregnancy may have started as twins and one twin miscarried early in pregnancy. This is referred to as a twin demise or vanishing twin. The twin which did not survive may have had a chromosome condition. The DNA from the placenta of this twin remains present in the maternal bloodstream and may have been detected by the NIPT test. Studies have found that the DNA of a demise twin remains in a pregnant person's bloodstream for up to 16 weeks. Another cause of a false positive NIPT result is something called confined placental mosaicism. This means that the placenta can be genetically different than the fetus. Since NIPT examines the placental DNA, it does not always provide accurate information about the baby's genetic makeup. An additional reason for a false positive NIPT result is because a pregnant person can have a chromosome condition themselves. NIPT examines the DNA of the fetus as well as the pregnant individual. In some cases, the pregnant person may have a chromosome difference in some or all of the cells in their body that they were unaware of. Another possible reason for a false positive NIPT result is just due to chance or a technical issue. Keep in mind that if diagnostic testing is performed in a pregnancy and the pregnancy is confirmed to be affected with a chromosome or genetic condition, information and one-on-one -on -one support is available to you at elaine-life.com. I understand that receiving an abnormal NIPT result can be very stressful and anxiety provoking. Please remember that additional information can be learned about the health of your pregnancy through further testing and ultrasound. In closing, please support our community by liking and subscribing to this channel. I would love to hear from each of you. If you'd like, share a comment below about your own journey or other topics to cover in future episodes. With love and light, see you next time.